we saw in the previous video how you can use alpha bromination followed by a base to create an alpha beta unsaturated ketone or aldehyde. And so that should stand out when you see this, th these synthesis questions. That's sort of a, a feature that you'll, a key word that you would want to associate with that reaction. Now, this isn't a word problem, it's not a key word, it's more like a, I guess, a key structure. You see an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, alpha carbon is the one next to the carbonyl, and then the next one's the beta carbon. If you have a pi bond between those, attached to or conjugated with a carbonyl, you can make it with alpha bromination followed by treatment with a base, like pyridine. So that's one feature. If you sort of were doing retrosynthesis, you could look at it that way. A second thing, and that, so that's if you're looking at the product and thinking, okay, working backwards, how can I make this? But if you're looking at it from the starting material, you just compare the starting material with your product, one thing you'll notice, one difference you'll notice, is that you have more bonds to oxygen in your product. You only have one bond to oxygen in the starting material and two bonds to oxygen in the product, and so that's a sign that you have to do oxidation. Now here we have a secondary alcohol. The carbon that has the OH on it is bonded to one, two other carbons, so it's secondary. So we could use a strong oxidizing agent like sodium dichromate in water and sulfuric acid. And that will oxidize that secondary alcohol to a ketone. Okay, so then you can look at this, compare it with your product, and you'll notice that what you have is an alpha-beta unsaturation. Now, you could say, okay, how do you create a pi bond? You create a pi bond by doing elimination reactions. But in order to do an elimination reaction, you have to have a leaving group. So how can we put a leaving group on one of these positions? And then you remember the reactivity of the alpha carbon. When you, whenever you see aldehydes or ketones from now on, you don't just want to see the reactivity in the carbonyl, although there's a lot of reactivity there. You also want to see that the alpha positions can be nucleophilic. So you could do either acid or base catalyzed. In the reaction we just learned, alpha bromination, use an acid catalyst, and you'll see why in a future, when we talk about the halo form reaction, you'll see why uh, we use an acid catalyst here. So that was that H3O plus in brackets, that's the acid, and then the catalyst is the brackets, and then bromine, molecular bromine. The H3O plus turns the alpha carbon into a nucleophile as the eno as the e when you when it creates the enol the H3O plus catalyzes the keto enol tautomerization as we've discussed in the previous five videos or so and that turns this area into a nucleophile which can then attack the bromine and after one more proton transfer what you end up with is a bromine on that alpha position. Now, if you're interested in the mechanism for that, I strongly encourage you to watch the previous video where we go through that mechanism several times with several different molecules. Once you have the leaving group there, you can do the elimination to create the pi bond. So you do the elimination by adding a base. The base that we've been adding has been pyridine. So this is the structure of pyridine, here's the word pyridine, sometimes you might also just see PYR, so all three of those are the same thing. Now it's important that you list these as different steps when you're writing out the recipe, because if you mix all of this stuff just together, it won't react with the carbon chain, these different molecules will react with each other. So you want them to specifically act, react with the carbon chain, so first you would do the oxidation. When you compared these molecules you saw that you increased the number of bonds to oxygen, so you did an oxidation. It was a secondary alcohol, so you can use a strong oxidizing, oxidizing agent like sodium dichromate, Na2Cr2O7, in water and sulfuric acid. That's your first step. That gives you the cyclohexanone. Now then, you compared this with your product and you saw that you had a double bond that you have to make. 
A really important concept is that the way you make pi bonds is by doing elimination. But in order to do an elimination reaction, you have to have a leaving group. So we had to think about how we could put a leaving group like a halogen onto one of these two carbons. And we realized that the alpha carbon can act as a nucleophile. We just have to use catalytic acid to get the enol and then have that enol attack a bromine. That's a second step. Both of those are together in that step. And then finally, once you have your leaving group on that alpha carbon, you can do the elimination by adding a base. And the base that we've been using has been pyridine. So this is really the, almost the same exact recipe as we were using last time. It was just this one addition of the oxidizing agent in order to create the ketone that makes the alpha position reactive. Okay, let's try that same sort of thinking with another transformation. So again, you can think about this retrosynthetically. You can look at the product and think, hmm, what features are there in that molecule that I recognize and that I know how to make, even if it's not from the starting material? And if you did that, you'd notice an alpha, beta, unsaturated aldehyde. And so you can say, oh, I can make that with alpha halogenation or alpha bromination. So that's one way you can think of it retrosynthetically. Starting at the product, how could you make it from the reactants? The other way you could think about it is looking at the reactants. You'll notice you only have one bond to oxygen here. Here you have two, so you know you have to do an oxidation. Now this time, this oxygen, the carbon that has the OH on it is only bonded to one other carbon. It is primary. So you can't use a strong oxidizing agent like sodium dichromate because that will turn it into a carboxylic acid. To turn a primary alcohol into an aldehyde, you have to use a weak oxidizing agent like PCC, pyridinium chlorochromate. So that would give you this molecule here, which is almost the exact same thing as this. The difference is that this molecule has a pi bond between the alpha and beta carbons, and this one doesn't. So how do you create a pi bond? You do it with an elimination reaction. But to do an elimination reaction, you have to have a leaving group. So how can we get a leaving group into this area of the molecule? Well, when you see aldehydes and ketones, you don't just want to think about the reactivity of the carbonyl. Now you want to also see the reactivity of the alpha carbon. That can be turned into a nucleophile. All you'd have to use is some catalytic acid or base, but in this case we want to use catalytic acid. That, turn, that turns this aldehyde into the enol. The enol can use the, the pi bond you have in the enol can function as a nucleophile, and you can give it an electrophile to attack molecular bromine. And so in that case, you would put the bromine on the alpha carbon. Once you have your leaving group, you can create the pi bond because you have a leaving group and you can do elimination. All you have to do is add a base. The base we've been adding has been pyridine. So that's the sort of benzene with a nitrogen as one of the atoms in the six-membered ring. And it could be represented with a full name or just with a PYR. Either way, that steals the beta hydrogen, which kicks, and the electrons to that beta hydrogen kick the, create the pi bond and kick the leaving group off. And so that gives you your product. So this one is almost the same as the last one. The only difference is we had a primary alcohol, so we couldn't use sodium dichromate. We had to use PCC to do the oxidation. So the recipe here, and be really careful to write these numbers, because if you mixed all this stuff together in one big boiling cauldron, it would react with each other, not with the carbon molecule. So the first thing you do is PCC, pyridinium chlorochromate. A solvent for that is usually dichloromethane, so CH2Cl2. Um, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't take any points off if you didn't you, do use that, but that's just for your personal knowledge. Once you do that, you can put the bromine on the alpha position, so you can do alpha bromination. You just need catalytic acid to create the enol. Now the alpha position is a nucleophile, and you can give an electrophile to attack molecular bromine. 
Once you have that leaving group on the alpha position, you can do your elimination reaction by adding pyridine. So this recipe, done in that order, will make this transformation happen. And notice it's really very similar to the, the reactions we were doing above. There was just the oxidation step at the very beginning in order to create the reactive carbonyl in the reactive alpha position.